Street Fighter 6 has been out for a whole year, so now we can look back and take a look at what the game has brought to the fighting game community, how it's changed itself for better or for worse, what can we expect in the future and the years to come for Street Fighter 6, and overall, the big question in the room, is it still worth it? My name is One Step, and if you enjoy fighting games, I recommend subscribing here for more, because I have new videos twice a week, and I stream twice a week. Street Fighter 6, one year later, is it still worth it? Has it been upgraded? What has changed? There's a lot to go over, pros and cons, so let's just dive right into it. Street Fighter 6, really made itself feel unique and fresh as the newest installment to the franchise by bringing in a ton of new mechanics to the game like drive rush drive impact for punishes drive parries to really turn the fight into your favor and drive reversals to get your opponent off of you there are so many mechanics that bring so much depth to the game that it's just so much fun to figure out how they work for your character, your character's play style, and even how you want to play. Street Fighter VI brought an amazing roster to the game full of returning characters and new characters alike, and also character types for every kind of player. There's charging characters like E Honda and Blanca. There's grapple characters like Manon and Zangief. And then your Shoto or basic characters like Ryu and Ken and Lu. And then there's more tricky characters like Dalsim and Rashid. No matter how you want to play, there's going to be a character that I, I promise you you're going to click with. There's so many different ways to fight, so many different ways to play, and they've really showcased that in the characters they made. Not only that, but year one of Street Fighter brought in some fun characters. We have returning characters like Rashid, a new character like Aki, and fan favorites like Ed, and of course, most recently, Akuma. And as you might have already seen, Street Fighter 6 announced their year two DLC, so the upcoming future for characters for Street Fighter 6 look awesome. I'm talking M. Bison. Are you kidding? me elena we got street fighter 6's very first guest characters terry and mai from snk fatal fury and they look so good i cannot wait to play them in street fighter 6 so not only has street fighter 6 had an amazing past year its first year out being a game but it's got a very promising and bright future for characters game balances and so much more i'm pumped for the future of this game speaking of characters and balancing street fighter 6 has had a couple tweaks a couple balance patches in the past year but i believe they've all been healthy and viable street fighter 6 feels the most balanced it's ever been. I feel that every character is viable in some way, somehow. Sure, there are better characters that have maybe more utility or more tools than some, but every character has their strength and their weakness. Personally, I'm a Manon main and I've been a Manon main since day one, and I am a Diamond 3 rank player. And the reason why that might matter is because Manon's always kind of been considered a, a bottom tier character in a way, and being Diamond 3 as a bottom tier character goes to show that it's all about the player behind the controller, not the character themselves. Every character, bottom tier or not, is very viable. I feel that Street Fighter 6 is a very balanced fighting game. Sure, there could always be some changes I want to see, some nerfs, some buffs, obviously, but at the end of the day, it's overall pretty balanced, and it's just going to get better and better as time goes on. Street Fighter 6 also has an amazing soundtrack, making every fight feel just that much more intense, giving that much more life to the game and the characters themselves, because every character has their own theme song. There are some characters that I don't play, but I love their theme song, like Jury and Zangief. Freaking bangers, dude. Again, it just makes the characters in the game just feel that much more fleshed out, and I I love it. Never have I ever loved music in a fighting game like I do for Street Fighter 6. This game has one of the best training modes I've ever seen in a fighting game ever. This training mode is a legitimate box arena to really help your skills and elevate your gameplay. Of course, you can practice combos. You can see each move's frame data and understand what's safe and not safe on hit or on block. You can change the dummy around. You can have the dummy be recorded for recording setting. Change what you want to see on screen for like input history, frame meter, and more. You can also just combo practice, anti-air practice, offensive pressure practice, throw escape, whiff punish, punish practice, drive impact defense, and more. Helping you elevate your gameplay in just these settings alone is amazing. You can and should spend hours in training mode alone, and even though it's training, it's just so much fun. I love finding out new characters, finding out their combos, finding out maybe what characters I click with. Training mode is the place to be. Not only that, but Street Fighter 6 has character guides built in the game itself. I got videos, there's a ton of other YouTubers that have videos and guides on characters and mechanics. If you don't want to watch those, no problem. You can just go here and do the in-game guide for the characters. Let, let's go ahead and say you want to learn how to play JP. You have how to play JP right out the get-go. How do you play JP? What's his game plan? What's his strategies? Here's the special moves. Here's what they do and how to best use them. Here's the supers and how do you use them appropriately? Some fundamental strategies and even advanced strategies. You can learn a ton from just these guides alone and that's just in the game and then go into practice mode and practice them there. You can even practice pre-built combos in the game all the way from beginner to advanced. Really hone in your skills for any 
character you want to learn. Street Fighter 6 probably has one of the most smooth and lagless online experiences I've ever I've ever experienced myself. We've of course got casual matches for whenever you want to sit down, chill, and just play a few matches. And when you want to get really sweaty and lean forward, you got ranked matches. For ranked, it's going to give you 10 placement matches, where then it'll put you in like iron or bronze or silver, platinum, gold, whatever. And every rank has five different levels. So like gold one, gold two, gold three, and then once you hit gold five, you go from there to platinum one and so on. So honestly, if you never want to stop grinding, man, the grind never stops in ranked. And then when you want to play crazy, Street Fighter 6 has extreme battles where you can add like rules and gimmicks to the game. Just kind of fun when you're not really in the mood to go crazy on fighting, but you still want to fight, but have some gimmicks with it. Pretty fun. Street Fighter 6 has battle hub for the ultimate casual gaming experience. From world tour, you create your own avatar. You can make it look pretty basic like mine or go absolutely crazy like this guy <laughs> or create a giant weird red blue Mega Man hybrid. This is where you can add cosmetics, customize your avatar. And I say ultimate casual gaming experience because this way you can just like meet up with strangers or friends alike and just go to a cabinet and just uh, just wait for a fight. You can customize your avatar's whole moveset and then have avatar battles down here just for fun. You can give your avatar DJ's moves, Ryu's moves, and Chun-Li's moves. And so now you're a mixture of all three and that can make for some crazy combos and crazy gameplay. Now, how do we do all that though? In world tour mode. World tour mode is kind of like Street Fighter 6's open world mode where you can just go around, visit shops, get cosmetics, talk to NPCs, meet and learn from the masters like Chun-Li here. We got Ryu and Luke and others. This is where you learn Chun-Li's moves, for example, and you can then put Chun-Li's moves onto your avatar. So when you go do avatar battles, you have Chun-Li's moves attached to your avatar. And if you it's just fun to like just sit here solo. You're not really in the mood to like go on online and play rank. You can just go here and just like explore the world of Street Fighter. Go meet new masters. Go, go to new shops. You can just fight strangers on the street. Like, hey, Gary, you want to fight? He does. He wants to fight me. Get over here, Gary. Is it the most immersive open world ever like Witcher or Skyrim? No, it's a fighting game. But it's a blast for what it is, man. So if you ever want to just play solo and chill, you got World Tour. You got the ultimate casual gaming experience in Battle Hub. And when you want to get sweaty, just go online and play some ranked. So many different ways to play and I love that. Now, probably the most controversial yet unique thing that Street Fighter 6 has to offer is the new control scheme that they brought to the game and they brought this new control scheme to the game to bring in new players and i think it's great for that reason street fighter's always been on classic controls where they have six attacks you know light medium heavy punch light medium heavy kick and then those together do certain things and six attacks like that can be kind of a lot or intimidating to some newer players so i know a lot of people a lot of players that always kind of wanted to get into street fighter but but could just never get past those six attacks typically most fighting games only have four so adding two more can be a lot for some. So Street Fighter 6 implemented the new modern controls where they actually split the attacks in half. So you have light attack, medium attack, heavy attack. They attached all your specials to one button. So you got like forward special, back special, down special, two button supers. So you have faster reaction times on both your supers and your special moves. And they also have the assist button in modern that you can hold and then press medium a couple times to do a medium combo automatically. So you might be wondering, well, why wouldn't I just play in modern then it seems easier? Yeah, kind of, but the drawback to playing modern is you have less damage on your supers and your specials so yeah we can react faster with our forward special but it does less damage than normally putting in the inputs so you see that they're dead at 800 but if i did the normal inputs like this it does a thousand. So you lose 20% damage. And they also might have noticed there, I'm in modern right now, but you can do the classical inputs for your specials and your supers like this. That was the actual inputs for that super. However, if I wanted to do it just one hand and press two buttons, I definitely could but you lose that damage. Not only do you lose damage on your supers and specials, but you also lose access to some certain moves. In modern, you see here for Luke, we have our heavy button, which is actually our heavy kick. So you might be wondering, well, where is the heavy punch? Normally you can't access that heavy punch from modern controls. Sometimes like in Luke's case here, when you press assist and then heavy, you get your heavy punch. But not all characters do that. You're gonna be missing a few moves for every character. So the drawback is you don't have some moves you might normally want to have, and you have that damage debuff. This control scheme was made in mind to bring in new players and just make it easy to start learning the game and just play the game like right out the gate you can just grab a controller and just start playing luke and go oh i like i like how he plays this is really cool what are his specials oh we have an uppercut there we have projectile here i like the way luke plays and then over time as you learn the game you can either just stay in modern or you can learn classical later it's totally fine i'm actually a mixture of both i play some characters on modern and when i do there are some specials well i'll do the actual inputs for and even my supers 
It's all on how you want to play again. There are so many ways to play. It's very customized to you and your preference. What's most comfortable for you? What's most enjoyable for you? And that's the best part about Street Fighter 6. You can play however you want. I'm a big advocate for modern controls in Street Fighter 6. You're going to see a lot of haters online. They're like, oh, these are just baby controls. No, nah, man. It's, it's meant to bring in new players. It's meant for newcomers to just jump in, have some fun, and play the character. If they want to stick with it, that's cool. If you're a classic player right now getting mad because you've gotten beat by modern players, kind of sounds like a skill issue. So throughout the year, Street Fighter 6 has kind of just really enhanced all of these features, made minor tweaks to balances to really balance the game out and the characters. They brought in the four DLC characters and even new maps, new music, new cosmetics for your avatars, and so much more. And the future looks awesome as well with the, you know, year two DLC characters we're getting and all the balance patches they're going to bring to the game for all the characters in the future. The future is bright. It looks promising. And the past year has been very promising. So those are a lot of the pros. What about the cons? I'm not going to lie to you. I, if I, I don't, I don't, I can't really find any major cons for Street Fighter 6. It is damn near a perfect fighting game. If I really wanted to be picky, sure, I'll find something. Like if I really wanted to be picky, I wish there were more cosmetics and things you can customize for your character. Like I play Manon and it's like, it's cool you can change the color palettes for your character, but I wish there was like different mix and match outfits I can give to my character, like different bottoms or tops or shoes. Like we got to put some shoes on this degenerate. But honestly, that's just me being picky. Street Fighter 6 is a damn good fighting game and it has been from day one and over the past year, it's just gotten better. After a year of reworks and updates and patches and new characters, is Street Fighter 6 still worth it? Is it still good? After watching this video, you're probably not expecting this, but absolutely yes. Street Fighter 6 is definitely worth it. It's worth every penny. It's an amazing modern day fighting game. It's great for the players that have been fans for decades. And it's great for the new fans and new players as well. And the future for this game is just getting brighter and brighter by the day. And I cannot wait to see where this game goes. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of Street Fighter 6? What, what are your thoughts in the past year of the game? What have you liked? What have you not liked? What did I miss in this breakdown pros and cons wise? Let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe here for more fighting game content. Take it one step at a time and go ahead and click into these videos next for more Street Fighter 6 guides and new reactions and more.